What's up, YouTube? It's your boy Sanchez405 coming at you. It's on the Warpath. It's Warpath Wednesday, y'all. And before we get started, if you haven't already, make sure you hit subscribe and also like this video as well, too. We greatly appreciate it. We appreciate all of y'all's support. Um, two new videos up this week. That's why I'm coming to you with a recorded video for Warpath Wednesday. Monday, we did the live mock draft. Check that out. And then also we did a, a tribute to Bobby Mitchell on Sunday, the late great Redskin who spent a majority of his life with the organization was the first uh, African-American player to be signed by the Washington Redskins. So check that out and uh, rest in peace to Mr. Mitchell and all that he stood for uh, with the Burgundy and Gold and as a um, as a person, as a man. Um, some great things I think are going on in uh, Ashburn, well, wherever they are, they're doing it through Zoom. Had an opportunity to uh, watch Ron Rivera's press conference from yesterday with the media. And, uh, y'all, if you can't get behind Ron Rivera, there is something wrong with you. This man, I, I he delivers a type of honesty that we haven't seen in a head coach probably since Joe Gibbs. And then probably before that, Marty Schottenheimer. And then probably before that, Joe Gibbs, right? Um, he is the consummate professional. The man has a class and dignity about him that uh, that I have not seen out of a head coach from the Burgundy and Gold. Uh, first thing he did in the press conference before he did uh, anything was to, um, you know, shout out, talk a few things uh, about, uh, talk about a few things with Bobby Mitchell and sent his condolences to his family. So class move right there. That, and that's what you, he recognizes the history and the name uh, of Bobby Mitchell and the man that he was and what he meant to the franchise. So that was kudos to him. And then they got right into business and they talked about the Trent Williams situation. The first thing that was asked him, it was by J.P. Finley. And he asked about the Trent Williams situation. Are there any updates? And the first thing is that I noticed was it's consistent. Ron Rivera is a consistent man. He's a man of consistency. He's a man of a process, right? So he said it's still a process. It's a work in progress. Uh, there are several components, and um, they, they're still looking. They're still looking for the offer, but they aren't going too deep into it. He said this from the job. Our policy is we're not going to talk about people under contract, and he he has not went into that, and. No matter how much Trent Williams' agent, no matter, and like we said, it, there's two sides to each story. There, there's my story, there's your story, and then there's the truth. Well, there's three sides, right? So I, I can appreciate this, that they're still working on it. He didn't bash Trent Williams. He didn't bash his agent when he had every right to. And this is something the Redskins would get into the weeds with with a Bruce Allen. I hate to hash up old um, old wounds, but that this is something that would happen, right? So now it, it we ain't got to worry about that. It's great. It, it, it it's a breath of fresh air. Uh, you know, you don't have the shortness of a Jay Gruden and probably the immaturity of him too. And and I'm not saying that the man's a grown man, but I, I think there were some ways that Jay kind of let immaturity reign in the Washington Redskins. You got a man right now, right? In Ron Rivera, and then also you know you had Mike Shanahan who is the the established, the accomplished coach who knows how to do it his way. Ron Rivera, on the other hand, he's still hungry. He's still looking for his championship. He's still trying to get to the mountain. He's been to the foot of the mountain. He hasn't been to the hill yet. So he's still looking to be hungry. Um, he, he, and he went on to talk about the Quentin Dunbar situation. And, you know, he said... Straight up, Quentin was looking for something we aren't, we weren't interested in giving him, which is a new contract. He still had one year on the contract, and it was to prove it, whether it was guaranteed money or whatever. He had to prove it. He had to stay healthy. He even mentioned something about uh, his health, and he's like, he got the fair value. They got the fair value with the fifth round pick, and you know, hey, I, I will. That remains to be seen. We'll see how it goes. But if he's confident, in it, he has to be confident. He is. The messenger of this team. You notice we don't see too many voices. The only two voices we really heard from, good, bad, indifferent, have been Kyle Smith and Ron Rivera. That's it. 
Uh, so kudos to to him on that. And then he talked about uh, Monte Nicholson uh, in the wherewithal to understand what was going on with the situation. I don't know who he who Monte made friends with in the organization, but he should have been gone after that first incident. He should have been gone. But you know, I, I can understand a part of you know you want to help the young man out, and I'm not going to bash a team for that. But to the point where he's out there playing, starting, and everything, maybe that's not the best way to go about it. But we don't know the whole situation, so I'm not going to get into a judgment game about Monte Nicholson. We just know what we see, uh, what we've seen, and what was reported. So, I and with that being said, I, I send well wishes to him. I hope this legal situation gets uh, ironed out. And, uh, you know, maybe he can go latch on with another team and be successful in his NFL career. Um, Then he went on to the big topic Ron Rivera did was free agency. Now, I know a lot of us have been upset about the Redskins pursuing a free agency. We should have went out and got these big names, the Coopers and the Hoopers of the world. And... That and I, I've said this before, I'll say it again. I will run it into the ground. This is not the mantra of a Ron Rivera led team. They don't spend money on players, they build through the draft and they fill needs in free agency. That's what they do. Uh, if you don't, you know, if you don't get that, that this is what this is what's going to be for however long Ron Rivera is with the Burgundy and Gold. And uh, they, they felt the needs. They talked about bringing in. They like what they saw to Sean Davis he, and uh, Ronald Darby. Uh, those are two people he actually uh, highlighted to begin with. Uh, you know, they do have injury histories, but it's the raw building. He actually made a comparison to my, uh, Mike Mitchell, who was the safety there for a year, and then got his big contract with Pittsburgh. So that's what they're looking. They're looking to get that untapped potential and that, that's what they're trying to be and they're young they're not old he's not going in there to where he's building a young team he, he pretty much said that um they're looking to build that foundation so they're not going to try to get these uh superstars they're trying to find these solid starters uh he talked about thomas jones so thomas jones uh, excuse me not thomas jones um i've got my big stone gap virginia mind in right now thomas davis who played with him in carolina and was in uh, L.A. with the Chargers last year, is coming to Washington. And he, he admitted, this is a culture hire. This is a culture signing right here. Thomas Jones can give the leadership, and he is a guy who's going to give the message. He is going to be the messenger for Ron Rivera in that locker room. So you got that guy. You've got that character. You've got that culture. You've got that leader. In Thomas uh, Thomas Davis, however many years he has left to play, maybe this might be his last year. The man's 38, but good move. We've said that before. It, it was a good move on the part, and it was a culture, leadership. That's what you need. I would not be surprised if Thomas uh, Davis isn't wearing a C on his, pat, on his chest come the regular season. So he and that's what he's going to use him as a key cog to move his message along to sell his message with Ron Rivera. Uh, they liked what they saw out of John Bostic. He said that that was a guy who was popular in the locker room, and he is um, he was willing to give him a contract. He's not too old either, and he kind of fills those roles that Ron Rivera was looking for. And then he talks about the big signing, probably was Kendall Fuller. Uh, the versatility that he spoke about Kendall Fuller was. The fact that he could play the corner, he can play inside, he can play outside. Um, he can also play, if you need to, play this free safety spot. But he said that's going to be a competition that he pretty much said without saying it, he wants Sean Davis to to take the reins and win that because he pairs so well in that secondary. Um, yeah, and, and like I said before, he he's talking about getting um, – the potential he's looking for the potential uh to make talented players that can become solid starters that's why he's giving a lot of these one-year contracts on these proven deals to see if they can reach their untapped potential so we will see in the likeness of a sean davis and a ronald darby so they at uh they asked about um 
the process. And, and he, he keys on two things. And this is what Redskins fans, we're going to need to realize. I, I've said this before. I think the Redskins are good for a three, four, maybe even five win swing next season. So that's putting them at at least, that's putting them at maximum eight wins. He's talking about patience, and that's what he asked. He said it doesn't, it's not just going to be this team. It's going to take the front office, the head coaching staff, the players, and then it's going to take us as the fans to get behind it. Now, we know this team ain't giving us worth donkey doo-doo to come up and shine, right or wrong. Yeah, you know, they, they, they've been crap. They have been crap. They've been sloths for the last couple of years. Seven and nine, losers, disastrous last year, lucky to win three games. And Ron Rivera isn't like, he's not like, we're close. That, that was one of the things that they were kept on saying. I, I listened to, uh, I was watching the Redskins 360 um, videos here on YouTube. And what they were talking about, Chris Thompson said, we're close. We know we're close. And this was in May. Excuse me, this was in April during the draft. We know we're close. Close to what? Thinking about it now, right? We know we're close. Close to getting Jay out of the <laughs> getting Jay out of the burgundy and gold. But that's what happened. It, it, and I, I mean it, it's just amazing from the positivity to what happened then. But Ron Rivera acknowledges and he gives credit where credit is due. He said that this that Kyle Smith and company, they did a great job of scouting. And drafting these players, these this young nucleus that they've had over the last couple of years that they've brought in. And he, he's saying the patience and development. He wants to find players that that they can develop if they want to get this young squad. And that's the one thing that, that we haven't seen from the Reds in a while. When the Reds, like around the time Mike Shanahan was here, this was an old team, and that was almost 10 years ago. This team really took a youth swing back. What, 2015, 16? This is when we started getting a little bit younger. And then you've got some players that are getting ready to go to their next contract and they're getting ready to tap and they're getting ready to scratch the surface here. And Ron Rivera, he he, he acknowledges that. So I, I am I'm pumped. You know, he's not trying to feed us baloney. He's being honest. It, it's going to take time. And he, he acknowledges the fact that he sat behind the eight ball. And right now, he did that back in 2011 when it was a lockout season with the Panthers. He didn't see his players until they really came in in the summertime. That was the first time. And they struggled. I think they went 5-11 and 11 or something, something crazy like that. But they did improve off of John Fox's last year. And then uh, he goes in and talks uh, about, I've got my notes here, so I'm reading them as I go. <laughs> I got him. And um, they were talking, and he's talking about uh, just prepper, uh, preparing, being ready. If they got to do it via Zoom or whatever, um, you know how their uh, location, whatever it's going to be, they they they've got to be ready. Uh, and he talks about the draft and the, his approach to the draft. So I thought this was really interesting. He seems very positive. On, he, he admits he wasn't that technology uh, technologically inclined, but he talks about the advantages that he'll that the skins are, are looking to have in the draft uh, with this virtual uh, with this virtual uh, draft that they're getting ready to have, and. I mean, I, I think that's a, I think that's positive that he he just sees that like he's honest, but he's positive in the same light. You don't really find it. It's kind of hard to to find nowadays. Um, he admits that he was watching the C CBS evening, uh, not evening, but the morning show, and he said, "Well, this is kind of what we're going to have to do. We're going to have some people there, some people here, and uh, they did make mention that they're getting ready to go through the coaching reads." Um, for the players in the draft. So they're going to move players. They're going to slide players and see what they, um, see what goes on those meetings. And he said, that'll probably be a five day direct process. Um, and then, uh, what was interesting, I, I mentioned earlier about, and this is kind of how fluid the conversation went. Um, 
he mentioned Amari Cooper and uh, and Austin Hooper, uh, and he said they pursued. He admitted they pursued, and this is something that was out of the ordinary for Ron Rivera, not in Carolina. They didn't go out. They didn't offer hundred million dollar contracts to wide receivers, and they pursued him hard up until the last hour, until the eleventh hour, or they they were going after him. But you know, he went to Dallas. He said they've got respect for him in that regard. So you know that, but they weren't in on the Austin Hooper deal as much as people made it seem like. Uh, his number was going up as the top as a top free agent in that in, at that position at the tight end position. So they weren't going they they weren't going to go through that route. So you know, good for them to pass up, not to get too thirsty. I know a lot of people are saying. That, you know, we need to go out here and spend money. But sometimes, hey, I've said this before. You know, bargain shopping, bargain hunting. That's what you got to do sometimes. And that's what he did. And, you know, we did. I did have a conversation with somebody here on YouTube about you get what you pay for. That's all right, though. You know you're wrong. And if you make a mistake, it's not going to cost you that much in the end. I told y'all I got my notes. I got my notes with me today. Um, so the, and then I, I already mentioned he talked about the health concerns of Darby and Davis, and then they talked about the draft again. They talked about him relying heavily on the scouts. Um, they're gonna let them play their roles, and they're gonna rely on that information that they've gotten. Um, he he praised Kyle Smith a lot for what he did. Uh, in his work with the scouts and everything else and getting the draft together. Um, and then they brought up the fact that um, the the monkey in the room, the trade, uh, Kyle Allen, the question was asked, uh, you know, and, and he did not make a commitment to Kyle Allen or he didn't make a non-commitment to uh, Dwayne Haskins. He said it's going to be a good competition between them. I talked about how high character guy is. Um, he's doing. He's doing. He's the best at doing whatever job he's given. So he'll be pumped up if he's the backup, if he's a starter, whatever. He's going to be in there. And he mentioned he was with a big personality in the room with Cam Newton. I don't know if that's alluding to uh, the big personality of Dwayne Haskins, but we'll see. So Kyle Allen knows how to handle. So and you need that backup. And he's the right kind of person for that quarterback room. That's a direct quote from um, Ron Rivera. So um, they talked about the tight end position a, way, uh, a ways away too, and they said they they may look in the draft. So there are um, there are a couple of tight ends. We thought about Thaddeus Moss. I know some people like um, uh, I know I'm going to mess his name up. So I know the tight end from um, Notre Dame is it Comment. Or uh, cement. I I don't know how to pronounce his name. So uh, somebody check that for me and let me know in the comments. <laughs> um, but he talked about, and I thought this was really interesting. And this is my really my last point on this on Ron Rivera's uh, press conference or conference call, whatever you want to call it. Um, he talks about the first five draft picks. First five. Those are automatic impact players. You got to start them from day one. Uh, and he said he's not afraid to play young guys. So, and he was very bullish on this, and this was key. I, I thought, and y'all know how I feel about the draft. I think the draft is a crapshoot. I really do. And uh, no matter how many times, I, I favor more picks because that means you get as many times to uh, roll the dice as possible. With that being said, though, boys and girls, um... He said, he made it interesting. He's like, if you trade back that pick to get more picks, so player A and B, so if you trade pick five, and uh, excuse me, pick two, go back to five, get a pick up 18, those two players are going to have to feel the impact of the player you could have got at the second overall pick. Which is interesting. I, I thought, um, and it made a lot of sense to me. So he's like, you don't want to just trade away picks just for having picks. Well, I said we've had a hole in the ship for a long time. We we've got a uh, we've had a lot of holes in this ship. 
that you got to plug up. But I think without saying this, and I ain't trying to put word, I'm not trying to put words up in the man's mouth. I really do think the Redskins are going to be locked and loaded at number two, and they're going to take Chase Young. That is, I, I think that is probably a 95% bet right there. I, I think I will take that to, I'm not a betting guy, but I will take that to the bank and go with it. And uh, don't at me in the comments with that, that one. I like Isaiah Simmons, but I think at the moment, the Redskins need, they need this, this talent, this generational pass rusher. You got to get, he's drawing comparisons to Julius Peppers, who was in Carolina, who was a threat in Carolina. So, and I did, and now if this was Dustin Minusty or 0 oh, 16 Joe Barry or the incomparable Jim Hazlitt, I would have concerns about us drafting this guy and us messing up. Jack Del Rio was the defense coordinator in Denver. And Jack Del Rio took this guy, I think they drafted, the Broncos drafted him right after some dude named Cam Newton. And then they drafted another dude. This dude, he really hadn't had that great of a career. Name's Von Miller. I think he may or he may or may not have been a Super Bowl MVP. May have had multiple double digit sacks in a season. Um, he knows how to facilitate that. So get this guy in here. He has a good defensive line coach up there at Ohio State. Bring him down here. Bring him with um, Jack Del Rio, who's going to get the most out of him. I, I honestly believe that. And did you pair him with the minds? of Ron Rivera, Jack Del Rio, and then you get uh, Mills to work with him as well on that D-line, I think the skin's going to be all right, y'all. Got to go at You got to go after the Predator. Got to go after him. I think it's going I think it's going to be a great move for the Burgundy Gold. Go get him, and I don't think they are going to pull out. They, they aren't going to pull from that pick at two. I, I think it would have to be a devil's ransom it would have to be similar to the, um, oh my goodness, the New Orleans Saints trade when they traded with the Redskins to get Ricky Williams. It would have to be that crazy for that actually to happen. So they, they and they're gonna go through the process. He talks about the process. He even talked about what he talks to Dan Snyder about as well too. So he talked to Dan Snyder. Uh, uh, daily maybe other every other day and he just wants to know what's going on that's what he says granted we know dan snyder we know how he is uh well not really we don't really know a lot about dan snyder we just know what's reported about him uh very few interviews i i like i said go and see that espn interview that he did with rachel nichols about 10 years ago he he's a he's a little awkward feller um but, uh, yeah, that and like I said, overall, I think that was a great press conference uh, by um, Ron Rivera. I'm glad the Burgundy Gold have this gentleman, has this man here, who's going to establish some, hopefully will establish some accountability for this team. Um, and they're adding these players. Like I said, it, Rome wasn't built in the day, and I, I'll say it as well. You know what? We've been in the double wide, the leaky double wide in the back lot for a while, not saying anything bad about double wide, y'all. But we're trying to build a mansion here. That's what Ron Rivera is trying to do. He is trying to build a mansion. His character is trying. He's trying to rebuild and reestablish this team to greatness. And it's going to be brick by brick. I hate to quote Butch. Uh, was it Butch Jones who was at uh, Tennessee? Brick by brick, you really are. Let's just say stone by stone. How about that? Uh, cement by cement, cinder block by cinder block. We will get there, and we're going to get to the top, y'all, with this guy. But we got to let the process, got to let the process pan out. Got to establish it. Y'all remember, you think about it. You remember when the Golden, War uh, Golden State Warriors were bad? They had a process. They built. They won a championship, right? So you think about it. You look at the San Francisco 49ers. They drafted, built, built, built. Didn't really go out and get these friends. They were almost... They almost won the Super Bowl, but they have Kyle Shanahan, right? So, I mean, it's going to take time. I know I, I hate being the one. 
I look at the calendar. I'm like, my God, we got to go through another year of this. But it's going to be all right. We just got to hang on and believe in, our, believe in the man that is uh, willing to, that took on this job and, her, and knows the rumors, knows you, you know he's talked to people about what, the, what he's about to get into. Either he's crazy or he's a genius. I would like to err on the caution that he's a crazy genius. So I, I, I've, I've got, he's got my support and I thought this was a great press conference. He handled the media well. He wasn't off putting, um, you know, and he's enduring. He's getting established in the area. I think he's going to make a, a big footprint like he did in, um, like he did in Carolina. And I think we're going to, be the beneficiaries of that. And we're going to make Carolina jealous, right? We're going to make all them call all your Panthers fan. Everybody got a Panther fan up in their family, right? Especially if you're, if you're living in uh, DMV. Anyway, everybody got one Panther fan up in their family. Reach out, give them a hug, and say Matt Rule will be fired in two years. But uh, tell me what y'all think. Uh, comment. I will get back to you as soon as possible. Um, make sure that you check out the two videos I mentioned at the beginning of this. And also... If you haven't, um, like this video, share it if you can. And also, um, you know, we're, we're on Twitter as well. You can follow me at Sanchez405. Follow me on Instagram at Sanchez405. And you can follow Mr. Amir as well at, at Amir Baharlu underscore Amir Baharlu or dot. I don't remember, but I, I'll get that. He's going to um, he's gonna get mad at me for not remembering that. But we love you guys here. As always, we appreciate the support. We're growing every day, and that means the world. When we started this four years ago, that, that means the world uh, to us. And we're just trying to um, build this into something that we can be proud of and that we can have another piece of the forum. Because it's not just one. It's all of us all together in a forum, Redskins, content creators, and uh, we support each other. So, I, I mean, it's great. It was great to talk um with louis t last week so um yeah check out check them all out and as we say here on on the war path y'all love peace and hell and i'll be talking to you real soon i'm out <laughs>